Gratitude is a killer of destiny. When you are thankful, you have your thankful. An atmosphere of joyfulness is the breeding ground for miracles. I came as your prophet to announce to you by the authority of God on my life that this year will not end until your season changes. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Genesis 1 28. Here is the mandate. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful. Shout it, I am fruitful. I didn't hear it louder. I, I can't hear you. I now fruitfulness encompasses five areas. There's the fruit of the lips. There's the fruit of the hand. There's the fruit of the mind. There's the fruit of the womb. And there's the fruit of the spirit. See that? So all around fruitfulness is the mandate of God on your life. Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Once again, shout it, I am fruitful. Now, this is what God said. He said, be. Whatever God says be has to be. Well, you know, anything God says, Satan tries to contest it. Whatever God has given, he has given. Whatever God said, he has spoken. And every word of God is true. They are yea and amen. But here is the twist. That God said it does not automatically mean it will happen. Why? There is a part you must play in the equation of bringing God's word to pass. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, I think in verse 19, it says, Son Timothy, see that through the prophecies that went ahead of you, that you through them might war a good warfare. Verse 18 and 19. It says, this prophecy, 1 Timothy chapter 1, he says, this prophecy is that has gone ahead of you. See, that thou through them might test war a good warfare. In other words, every word God speaks, you must take it and do battles with it. The reason is obvious, because the enemy somewhere is ensuring that whatever God said concerning you does not happen. Isaiah chapter 58, beginning from verse number 6. Isaiah 58, verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Is not this the reason for the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness tonight. The chains of wickedness over your marriage, over your finances shall be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. So what is the reason for fasting? Pastor, why are we fasting for three days? He says to lose the bands. The chains of wickedness. Number two, to undo the heavy burdens. Every burden the devil has placed on your shoulders that is weighing you down shall be taken off today. Yeah. Number three, and to let the oppressed go free. Everyone who is under any demonic oppression, by the anointing tonight, that oppression is come to an end in the name of Jesus. As we anoint you tonight, every trace of satanic oppression on your destiny shall be totally erased in the name of Jesus. He says, and to let the oppressed go free. Some are oppressed. That's why they can't seem to get a partner for marriage. They are oppressed. That's why they can't seem to have a child. They are oppressed. That's why everything they do don't work. Number four, and that you break every yoke. So this is the fourfold manifestation of a Holy Ghost inspired fast. Number one, he says to lose the bands of wickedness. Number two, to undo heavy burdens. Number three, to let the oppressed go free. Number four, to break every yoke. Tonight, these fourfold actions shall happen in your lives. Jump to verse eight. He says, when you have done that, what happened? He says, then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thy health spring forth speedily. Somebody's going to get pregnant this month. Yeah. As a wife, this month is your month. 
The husband is going to be able to pregnant his wife this month in the name of Jesus. Your head will spring forth out speedily. It shall be a miracle that will happen like a lightning bolt in the name of Jesus. So after the fast, what did he say will happen again? Verse 8. Then shall your light, everyone's light that the enemy has covered, after you have fasted and the thing is taken away, that light that God has put on you, that the enemy has covered, he says that light shall break forth like the morning in the name of Jesus. Your day star is about to rise. He says, and thine health spring forth. So there are demonic forces holding back your health. That when they are cast out, your health shall spring forth. Every cell, every tissue, every organ in your system begins to function properly. He says, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. Actually, it means the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Shall be your defense. I create a passage for you. When God's glory is on your life, he says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So these fourfold actions is what we came here for tonight. The reason for the fast, he says, is to lose the bands of the wickedness. Now, he says, for this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested. First John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy all the works of the devil. So I am manifested today to destroy all the works of the devil in your life. He says, oh thou enemy, your destructions are come to perpetual end. In Psalm chapter 9 verse 7, he says, oh let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. So it takes fasting to subdue and bring to an end the wickedness of the wicked. Number two, to undo heavy burdens. They are walking like elephants but eating like ants. Living from hands to mouth. Poverty has held them bound and captive. You see people and you see poverty like a personality standing by them. Today, we are going to establish your separation from poverty in the name of Jesus. Do you know what poverty is? Poverty is a spirit that supervises lack. The harder you work, the poorer you become. Poverty makes sure you never make ends meet. And they're what we call family poverty. There are some families, everybody from top to bottom, everybody's poor. Everybody's poor. They are the least of the least in the community. Nothing seems to be working. They live struggling lives. That's a body. Poverty is a body. He makes people not lift up their heads when others are lifting up their heads. Today, whatever is putting you down, that heavy burden shall be taken away. Number three, and to let the oppressed go free. You know, in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. Who went about doing good and healing all those who were what? Oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. So oppression is of the devil. So the fast is to let the oppressed go free. Everyone here oppressed by any demonic force. And let me tell you, satanic oppression manifests in different ways. When you are oppressed, you can't see favor. When you are oppressed, you struggle. When you are oppressed, everything good will be happening around you, but not to you. When you are oppressed, you try everything every other person has tried. They succeed, but you fail. When you are under a demonic oppression, Everything seems to be correct, but when you get involved, it fails. It doesn't work out. You see everything. You have calculated it, and you think it should produce, but when you try it, it fails. That's oppression. It is beyond your physical or human abilities and effort. Tonight, every oppressed person here shall go free. Mm -hmm. It says, for whosoever the soul set free, John 8, 36, is free indeed. And I'm God's son, anointed to liberate people for quality living. Everyone under any body, under any yoke of oppression, I declare your freedom tonight in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number four, he says, and that ye break every yoke. You know what a yoke is? A yoke is a limiting force. It's something hanging over people's destinies, neck or legs. They try to go forward. The thing limits their progress. It's a yoke under people's legs on their necks. And people are guided or led by yokes. When you yoke an oxen, he can't do much. 
He become a burden bearer. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah 10 27, and it shall come to pass in those days, say the Lord, that his body shall be taken away from off the shoulder. So that thing that they put on your shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed. What? Because of the anointing. Tonight, everyone here will be anointed. He says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? The anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed. The burden shall be lifted. The yoke shall be destroyed. So, your fasting helps you generate anointing, momentum, power to destroy every yoke. You are supposed to be there, but because there's a yoke on your life, you are still here. This month, you are going higher and higher. Amen. You know, yokes are limiting forces. They limit your program. When the yoke is on somebody, they say you, in all your life, you will not go beyond it. There are some families, they know where they end. Everybody knows where they, no matter what they do, how they struggle, they, that's where they end. It's only two flats they can build. That's it. All others, they will be tenants till they die. Nobody will build a house. Even if they build a house, it's only the sitting room, the plasters, the bedroom, there's no plaster. <laughs> it's a yoke. Some have yokes of illiteracy in the family. Nobody goes to school. Some have yokes of, of, of poverty with a breast that. There's a yoke on people's marriages. You see, they can't have children. It's a yoke. It's sitting there. Somebody has to break it. And tonight we came to break it. Are you ready? It says, after you have done that, what happens? Verse 8. Then. So there is a day. There is an afterwards. Until you do this in fasting, then nothing happens. See, the reason why some Christians are not experiencing all of this is because they think life is a is, is, is joke. I've been teaching you in this church that life is spiritual. You deal with spiritual forces spiritually. You say, I've tried now, I've tried. Try what? Try what? When a demon is on the matter, he does not respond to physical activities. Doctors, if you like, go to the greatest consultant. It mustn't make any difference. You can spend 10 million naira. It doesn't change anything. When a spirit of infirmity is involved, you can be curing the sickness. It won't go. You deal with it spiritually. God sent me to tell you that in this new month, your dream is coming alive. Your dream is about to manifest. If you are a dreamer, shout amen. At Miracle Assembly, everything we do is geared towards liberating people for quality living. We celebrate the word and the works of our Lord Jesus Christ. So come join Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyanua, as well as the happy family of Miracle Assembly at our international headquarters at 147 Upper Owina Road by Ewotubu Police Station off Ago Street via Ekenwa Road, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria for our three power pack services every Sunday at 7.30 a.m., 9.15 a.m. and 11 a.m. and also on Wednesdays at 5 p.m. prompt for our School of the Word. It's always a wonderful experience in God's presence. See you there.